All right, folks, what is going on? This is episode 495 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller over here. We talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football, and we are five episodes away from 500. We're just moving right along, and uh, hopefully we'll just continue to do 500 more, but we got to get to 500 first, right? Right. Uh, today we're going to talk more Atlanta Falcons, not much on the Georgia Southern scene, um, just waiting for those guys to go ahead and beat up on Buffalo on the 27th. So we basically have, you know, about a week away from that game. Can't wait to talk about that because I want to see my George Southern Eagles, you know, get another bowl win. Nevertheless, we're going to talk about Desmond Ritter and his debut against the Saints. We're going to evaluate that. I'm also going to look at an article that I've seen. I'm pretty sure it's all over the place. If you haven't seen it, it is on the San Diego Union Tribune. Um, I don't know if it's a uh, subscription based or not, but I'm going to put the link down in the description. Maybe you'll still be able to see the 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 article. And uh, I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions as well as compare it to what you know, uh, Desmond Ritter said about himself. I think I find, I find it very interesting. Also, before we get out of here, I'm going to just, you know, give you my thoughts and opinions about the total package of what the Falcon organization and the fan base is up against in my opinion. So we're going to talk about all that. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and rumble. I'm also on anchor stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google podcasts. Uh, uh, I just want to thank you guys for continuously supporting. I cannot thank you guys enough. Uh, it, it's just been, um, really awesome to see that people do, uh, you know, listen and, and they give feedback and all the other great stuff. Before we get into this, one more thing I got to tell you guys, this show is brought to you by BetUS. That is the affiliate link. Click that link down in the description, put down $100, get a 125% bet book bonus on your uh, sports book, and you can start putting in wages on all these games that are coming up. The World Cup just ended. Hopefully, you made money off that. You got other games that's going to have a lot of playoff implications in the NFL. NBA is still going on, and we still got some bowl games going on, so go ahead and Put some wages down on those and double, triple, quadruple your money, depending on how you want to put your um your money down on these sports sports books. Hundred a hundred uh dollars, get a hundred twenty five percent bet book bonus with that link down there. Go ahead and check that out. All right, I'm going to get up into this. Desmond Ritter, thirteen to twenty six, ninety seven yards. You look at those numbers; those numbers are abysmal. I'll be the first one to tell you, those numbers were not. Uh, impressive at all it was actually pretty pathetic you know uh, I think he was up to 60 yards in the third quarter um it was it was just not looking good and I would say that Desmond Ritter is going to have a have a lot to learn he's going to have to do a lot you know um because me personally I'm not going to sit here and say oh D- Ritter's not the answer I mean hell, Mariota wasn't the answer I mean Ritter's not the answer we don't know what these guys are you know, I know Marcus Mariota should just did better for all the time he's been in the league. I thought he was going to, with his pretty much his second chance of being a starting quarterback. I thought he was going to be like a lot better than what he was. But from what we see with Desmond Ritter, it looks like Arthur Smith played Desmond Ritter exactly like he did with Marcus Mariota because the, the results are in. But I will say this, Desmond Ritter looked like he was much more poised he didn't get rattled a lot. He didn't make a lot of mistakes. Uh, I, I know the first part of the game, he was like amped up. He was throwing like wild deep passes. And that's how it is when you first, you know, your first game or whatever, you always see these rookie jitters or whatever the case may be. But after that, he slowed down a little bit. Um, it just looked like the opportunities was not there for in the passing game. And I would uh, equip to that to a lot of not many receivers getting open. You know, the receivers wasn't getting open. It's not like he missed players or overthrew players or uh, it was just bad passes. Um, I think he did a lot of passes that were pretty nice, you know, in tight windows that was pretty accurate. The, even the interception that was thrown, that was, well, I ain't gonna say it was the interception. It could have been an interception, but it was called back because the DB for the Saints um, stepped um, out of bounds. That ball was in a good place. That DB just made an excellent play on reaching out to get that ball. So I, I, I think the ball placement is one of the things that was ha- hindering Mariota. The ball placement is not bad at all, considering. I think he did pretty decent on that level. I think what the thing was is you just did not have much separation when it comes to the actual 
uh, receivers. Drake London did pretty good. He had seven catches for 70 yards. But after that, those are huge drop off. I think the next person was my Cole Pruitt with two catches for 20 yards. Then you turn back around and you making you doing all these. I ain't gonna do all these trick plays. You did two trick plays that was like unwarranted. It really wasn't needed to do those type of plays, um, especially when you're not taking you're not in control of the game. So, in my opinion, I think Mariota. Let me sorry. I think Ritter did okay. I mean, there's a lot that he could fix. You know, I think there's a lot that he could fix at the end of the day. I think he needs to. Come in, and I think he'll do this. I think he'll do this next game. I don't think he'll come in as hyped and jittered and nervous as he was. You know, that's one thing that you want you want to see not happen. So that's cool. And also, you would want to see him be a little bit more efficient because you got to understand, even though the ball placement was there, the accuracy was the accuracy was there. You still were thirteen to twenty six. You know what I'm saying? So you were like, if you're gonna pass the ball twenty six times, I want to see you be twenty for twenty six. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, and and this is one thing I've been saying. Like, I don't know if it's because of the play calling or was it anything else, but I'm gonna have to wait and see if Ritter is really the problem here when it comes to actually saying like, okay, Ritter is not putting the ball where it needs to be because when you look at Marcus Mariota. He was literally not putting the ball where it needed to be. He was like not real. He was not accurate at times. He threw the ball in crazy situations, you know. And 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 it's just some of his his decision making was like pretty questionable. One thing I will say for the most part, Ritter played very safe. And I think being able to play in an environment like in um in the Saints uh season Superdome, and for him to keep that kind of uh composure. I think he was, you know, all right. I, I want him to be better. Them numbers, they look abysmal. But when you look at him on the field, it seemed like it was, you know, seemed like he, he was okay. The one play that, that was a backbreaker was the Drake London fumble on 4th and 5. That was a, that was a backbreaker. And that right there, if you we would have kept on with that drive, I think we would have ended up scoring because we had those guys on their heels. You know, with a little bit of safe passing in the running game, we were doing really well. You know, so I, I think that it's something to it's something to uh pretty much, you know, um look forward to going down in in in, in you know in the future, next three games. Now, I wanna look at this uh in um, Chicago. So I wanna look at this the, I'm trying to think. Oh, San Diego Union Tribune. I'm just looking at something else. I'm sorry. I want to look at the San Diego Union Tribune uh, article here. I'm going to paraphrase a good bit that I've seen here. And um, first of all, I thought he was okay. And uh, But Desmond Ritter says he gives himself a C- minus or a D, which is uh, kind of, you know, all right, I see you gotta, you, you, you're pretty, pretty honest with yourself. And he said, it, um, let's see. It was really good in the execution coming out of the huddle, getting the play call and getting to the line of scrimmage, plenty of time on the play clock. Uh, post snap, I, I felt obviously I could have done better. And you know what I'm saying? It's like the 13 to 26, I think he did okay, but he, like, he could have done better because 13 to 26, 13 to 26. However you want to put it, it, you know, you, you got to do a little bit better than that. Um, Coach Smith uh, also says he's not scared at the moment. He's poised. I like what he's made of. It says a lot about, yeah, like I said, he, he did not get rattled. You playing in the Caesar Superdome against the Saints, your uh, hated rival, and you up against that crowd and everything, and it did not seem like he was overwhelmed at all. It's just that, you know, he 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 just didn't execute on certain things. Some some passes look good. I think a couple of passes was like wonky, but I think he did all right. Um let's see. Let's see, let's see. They got to do better with ball security. You know, that's how the ball popped out. That's um, Drake London's second time fumbling, you know. Uh, Atlanta trail 14 nothing early, but Ritter immediately he, uh, admitted he was too amped up at the start, forcing the deep ball instead of looking for open seat receivers on shorter routes. This is the problem that I had in the beginning. You don't have to be so aggressive. I get it. Your first time out there, you're a little amped up. You're hyped. You, 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 you know, you're getting the nervousness out of the way. You got the jitters. And, and this is where it was. The execution was not where it wanted to be. On some of those deep balls, I got to give the guys a chance to go make a play. I tried to be too perfect and put it out in front of them. In reality, all you have to do is give them a chance. And, and, and he will learn that. 
obviously you you're gonna have nerves and anxiety just getting out there for your first start in a crazy environment but this is all what all of us dream coming into the nfl there are a lot of emotions but i settled in after the first drive i just said that i said that going into the first five minutes of this show this is exactly what i'm talking about so after that they end up going down 49 yards drives and getting a field goal and they end up getting a, a, a touchdown. They made the game 14 to 10 at one point, And it looked like they was going to be able to do something. Even when the Saints went back and went up ahead 21 to 10, the Falcons capitalized on a good punt return. And they made the score 21-18 after a touchdown and a two-point conversion. And out of all of that, I'm not upset with the way this game played out because the 214 the two touchdowns that the saints got kind of broke our back and i know i was talking to some guys on atlanta falcons nation you go check those guys out on youtube um one guy said that um you cannot give the other team opportunities it's something that the defense do the defense will give the even though i don't have a complete issue with the defense but they made a really good point the defense gives up plays at the wrong time. That 21, that third touchdown was the play that we should not have given up. We need to hold these guys to 14 points. You hold them to 14 points, you probably would have won this game. Even so, even though they did get 21, we still had a chance to win this game with the drive at the end before the fumble. So this is the thing I will say here. I think the total package of it all, when you look at, what my thoughts are, what the what Desmond Ritter and Coach Arthur Smith said in this article, and also what we have as a package. There's going to be more rough sledding going on with this team. I, I believe that they can still pull off the, the next three games to be a win because the Bucks look crazy right now. The, the Ravens look crazy right now. The Cardinals don't have their quarterback. So... These next three games are winnable games. All of these games, if you look at every game that we played this season, outside of the Bengals game, every game we have is winnable. I really feel, once again, and I know people don't like to say this, or they don't like to talk about this, if this team can execute, and they're going to continue to have a bend, don't break. That's just, that's just going to be the nature of it. You can look at pretty much any game out there in the NFL right now, Every team has a bend but don't break mentality. I have yet to see like a lights out defense. Even when the Dallas Cowboys show that they can be um, a lights out defense, they can turn around and lose a game. They just lost to the Jaguars. So what I what I will say is you just have to execute. If you execute and just continue to stay on top of your execution and find ways to take advantage of opportunities, these next three games can be much easier than 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 we want these first two the first two scores that the saints got was pretty much the, the, the deciding factor of the game you just can't let a team get out ahead of you like that and you got to play catch up especially when you are our run first team so the falcons should be fine i don't think the defense is necessarily the big issue i still believe with all the shortcomings that are around here we still need to get better in the passing game. We get better in the passing game, we can beat anybody. I'll continue to talk about that for the rest of the season. Because regardless, you have Tyler Algier with his breakout game for throwing, running for 130 plus yards. You have, you know, um, the defense actually shutting down this offense after the first quarter where the defense basically didn't give up nothing but a touchdown after the fact. The offense going to have to do something. The off that and that's just what it, the offense. I, I'm sorry, I, I'll take that back. The passing game is going to have to do something, and 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 like I said, I get it. It's his first game, and it's mediocre numbers. But I did like what I see at the end it, it, overall, especially after the first quarter. I I don't have an issue with what I saw from Desmond Ritter. He's going. I I believe he's going to get better. I think he's going to be all right. I think these numbers are going to get a little bit better. I think his command of the team is going to get better. I think that the way things are going with this team, I think he's going to find ways to get better, even with the depletion of a Kyle Pitts or not necessarily having a number two. Because you got to understand, we got like one or two plays away from literally winning this game. But I will say this before we go. Coach Arthur Smith definitely needs to make things a little bit more simpler for Desmond Ritter. 
at least in the beginning of the game. Get him out there to get him in a rhythm. Let him get some confidence. Let him get him in a really good groove. Let him get in the groove because he you can see it. He looks like a guy like once he get in the in a groove and gets in a in a good little run, gets some momentum, he's going to be really good, feeling really comfortable on the football field. But you 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 got to give it to him. You got to give it to him. Give him that opportunity. But I think they'll be okay. May not be for the end of the, not may not be for this season. But I think in the long run, I think they'll be fine because this team is set up pretty good. You may need another number two receiver. You may need to go ahead and get Kyle Pitts back out there after his injury. But I think they're going to be fine. I mean, this 21-18 loss is a bummer. You'd never like to lose to your uh, rival. But seeing what you saw after that first quarter, it's going to be all right. I'm not saying that they're going to be, you know, you know, they're going to be the number one team in the NFC South. But the way this is set up, there's no reason why you can't say they can't win these games because they were really pretty much, uh, I mean, they pretty much was, you know, neck and neck with the Saints, even throughout this entire game. So we'll see. If you like this, commentary, the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think about his debut? Read the, if you could, if you don't mind, read the article. Let people, I mean, not let people, let find out what you think about the article and give yourself, you know, uh, uh, a second look at the entire situation. I think they did okay. You know, I think they could have could have been a lot better, but I think they could have been okay if they played a little like this in the entire four quarters. I think they would have been fine. All right, y'all. I'm gonna get up out of here. Y'all take it easy, and y'all be blessed. Peace. <laughs>